Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Olivia, and also the the the, the panelists. It's uh, I, it's it's it, it was a really nice nice panel to to listen to, and uh, as Olivia also said, uh, we could talk to, to this uh, about this for hours. Uh, so I'm 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 Martin Aretz. I'm an independent expert and researcher in the platform economy, and also part of the Wage Indicator Gig team. Uh, so thanks for the interesting contributions, uh, and also to see such a nice global group of audience into our virtual platform room. And I think the contributions also really make me again more aware that context in a discussion is very needed uh, because there's no platform, uh, there's no planet platform or planet gig. And also that we also need to really be really keen on language, uh, how it's used or abused. So uh, about, okay, what do we see when we talk about flexibility or, or, or security? Um, so in our webinars, we also always highlight the best practices uh, to see, okay, what is happening in the fields uh, of examples uh, doing the right thing, because uh, in many discussions we also sometimes tend to be on the negative side, and we also need, need to, yeah, put a spotlight on who uh, who are doing uh, the the <clears throat> uh, the experiments uh, where also Uma was referring to, and I think for this time it was really interesting to see that it was really hard to find them because when you ask crowd work or web based platforms on how they prevent inequality and discrimination, they all say oh, it's really important, but then when you ask them to also present. Uh, on how they try to prevent and also to, to show some data after of the results of the experience they, they all say okay we don't uh, we don't do anything significant efforts on that today uh, to mention anything uh, relevant so we don't uh, don't show up but we have one here uh, uh, which I will introduce later on first one initiative that did response but didn't was able to join uh, is the German crowdsourcing code, uh, which is a code of conduct uh, between eight German crowdwork platforms on how to improve the conditions uh, of the worker. And also nice to know yesterday uh, from Wage Indicator, we launched a podcast, uh, the Gig Work podcast. And in this uh, first episode uh, that was launched yesterday and an interview with the founder of the of the code, who is also the CEO of Crowdwork platform Testbirds. So we also share a link in the, uh, of the first episode uh, in the in the chat uh, today uh, in the chat of the Zoom, uh, which we also really want to highlight as a best, best practice. And then back to inequality and discrimination. Uh, we also saw today in the discussion that context matters a lot. And existing biases and challenges on uh, inequality and of the non-platform labor markets also reflects and is also sometimes amplified in various ways to web-based uh, work platforms. Uh, so in this part of the webinar, we look on how platforms can change their systems to avoid discrimination. Uh, this also reflects on what Uma said before about design. Uh, uh, do you design for efficiency or do you uh, uh, um, design for fairness? And I think... This doesn't, this doesn't need to be a, a trade-off. I think we can do both together. And what I see in practice is platforms copying each other on when you look at their matchmaking process and also what data they use for worker profiles. And we also see that sometimes a tiny change can make a big, uh, a big impact. So one example is a platform domestic work. Um, in the first phase of their platform existence, uh, the customers got more than 10 different profiles of workers to choose from. And then they discovered, no surprise, that there was a lot of discrimination in the matchmaking process. And then what they do, did, well, then what they did is they flipped the matchmaking process. So not the client got 10 profiles, but the clients put their uh, their question in, this, in, the, in, the, in the description, what he or she needed. And then the workers could respond to that. And then they saw just by this tiny process, uh, change in the process, that um, the discrimination was 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 uh, uh, much less than when it was uh, was uh, was before. So I think this example shows just small uh, changes in the process can make a really big big difference. And I think it all starts with awareness and understanding that fairness space of uh, also for the platform. Uh, and also what Grace also said, we need to more have research. Also, there was a question for more data, but I also think we need to have more experiments on how to change the process of platforms on how to um, uh, really go against this, uh, this existing biases also in the offline labor, labor markets. Uh, now back to, to our uh, best practice. I'm proud to present another best practice. Best practice. Uh, it's uh, it's SkillCV and uh, Adinda Alvarez, she, she will present. And I think they are a great example and also, and also a thought leader uh, in the question of how to redesign matching processes to avoid discrimination and bias and to put the skills of the worker in the first place. Because in the end, 
you want to have a worker that does the, uh, the job the best. Um, and although Skillsavy is not a geek platform, I think I, I really believe this case could also be can be a really great inspiration for the gig economy. So uh, Adinda, uh, welcome. Uh, great you're here, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will start with a presentation uh, regarding Skillsavy. I will share my screen a bit. Yes, yeah, I'm uh, Adinda, I'm a product owner at uh, Skillsafi. And uh, Skillsafi has the pay of uh, laat zien wat je kan in, in Dutch. Uh, really translated, it means show, uh, show us what you're made of uh, regarding the, the skills. I will start with a small introduction, um, some challenges that we are facing if we look at the, the labor market uh, solutions fee. Uh, are trying to provide. And uh, I will tell a little bit more about how Skillsfee uh, works and what our tool does, the benefits and also the lessons that we learned, but also the lessons that I uh, think the organizations can uh, yeah, really, really use. So for starters, yeah, we also already mentioned that the labor market has their difficulties, has their, uh, has their problems. And as uh, to quote Lodewijk Asher, he is uh, our far former uh, minister of social justice, but he's also part of our ethical board at Skill City. Uh, he mentioned the future calls for a fair labor market where all potential is equally transparent. And this is a, a nice and beautiful uh, goal, but it's also where the biggest challenge is because how can you make potential equally transparent um, another challenge that we are facing is um, the emancipation of the job seekers there are a lot of uh, job seekers who uh, they, they can fulfill jobs but they have a problem in finding uh, their way to the labor market uh, a third challenge that we're facing is the connection between education and the labor market. As um, this, as we see in Holland, for example, is that we need a lot of people for the tech sector, for um, people in the in in health or in other uh, branches, but we are not educating them. So we are educating people for the wrong for the wrong jobs. So these three challenges, um, yeah, we thought about it and we're thinking, okay, how can we, uh, as skills, we create a solution for, for this? So in the end, we came to two uh, important uh, points for us, and that is the skills-based matching and anonymized matching. So as now, uh, yeah, we believe that if we regard the the education and the and, and your working experience, but look at what you're made of, and combine that with um, an, an anonymized uh, matching, which provides the the hiring managers to look only at your skills, that we can have a fair match for both the candidate as the organization uh, organization themselves. And we do that all in an, uh, in an app to make, it, uh, to make it easy. Yeah, if we are talking skills and labor market, then the, the first suggestion, first thought would be, okay, then we're talking skills based on your working experience or even based on your uh, education. But we are taking it a little bit further because we believe yeah, you are not only your working experience, but also the skills that you uh, that, that, that were created during uh, your hobbies or doing some time off or, or doing work from home. All those skills, uh, they mean something. So these should also 
be not forget forgotten. So I've got some uh, examples. It is in in Dutch. I'm sorry, um, but for example, if you are a gamer, yeah, you you have uh, spatial insights, or you're strategic. Uh, maybe you're a team player because all the games are uh, online nowadays. Or if you're um, like to paint in your in your free time, you're also creative, and these are all skills that you can bring to your CV and bring to your uh, skills CV profile, which leads to uh, a matching job. So, how does this uh, this works? How does this work? Well, we uh, like I said, we created this app and. In this app, we are translating all your experience. So from education, from, from working experience to hobbies, we are translating them uh, to skills. Um, these are based on the European standardized skill set. So um, it, yeah, we all should speak the same uh, skill, uh, skill language. And they're also based on actual vacancies. So we can also move together with the with the trends that we are facing so all these uh, skills are translated into the or all your experiences are translated into skills and based on this we are creating this uh, skills of profile for you and with the skills of profile you can easily find a job and we are matching with all the vacancies in uh, we have in the netherlands and uh, we are matching them yeah, based on your uh, based on your skills profile after you find a job the thing you want to do is apply uh, is apply to the job that's also possible the fun thing uh, or the nice thing is that within each application you can say okay i've got these experiences or i got these skills and i want them to be known to this organization so you can create your own um, cvs by just toggling on or uh, off what you want to share with uh, with the organizations and then you are applying on an anonymized base so no photo, no name, uh, no last name, um, no uh, gender, no uh, years of working at that specific uh, company is being sent. And we do that because we want to reduce the possible discrimination that can be, um, yeah, that can occur based on uh, gender or a race or even age um only when the organization thinks okay this is an interesting profile only then they will send a question to you hey can i get your information and you as the owner of your data can say yes or no i want to give uh, i want to give this data to you so within these yeah three simple steps you can create you can come from a skills fee profile to a full application um, in only those uh, those three steps if i uh, take a look at the challenges again the make potential equally transparent <clears throat> emancipation of the the job seeker and also the connection to the education of the of the labor market i want to focus on these uh, first two um, um, more on how we think this could be the solution it's um yeah you have a standard standardized but personal cv so all the cvs are they look the same the the templating is the is the same but it's still personal because you can decide what uh, what data is is on it um yeah it's anonymized so you are being uh, reviewed on only your skills and for the third option is uh, yeah you are all also always in charge of your own personal data so you decide whether you give all your personal information to the company or not and for yeah because it's it's an app uh, a lot of people know how to handle uh, how how to work with this app 
it's uh, it's easy solution to go from a skills of free profile to your uh, to your application. We are uh, now six months uh, really live, and um, yeah, we did find some some lessons that we learned from the from the job seeker. Um, that the app it validates your capabilities. So translating the your working experience into smaller uh, smaller steps, smaller skills uh, gives some gives some validation. We do uh, realize that <clears throat> this is some work in progress. So we can this is something that we can uh, uh, yeah, do better, have more um, objective. Um, um, add-ons to this uh, to this validation, but yeah, we are working on that. It provides uh, new insights in what you're capable of. For example, if you are um, always, we're always a designer at at, at a company, but uh, it also gives you insights in what you can do, uh, what other jobs you can do uh, based on your skills of the profile. Um, and third, making your potential visible, it gives it gives confidence. I, uh, we had some uh, tests on um, on some schools, and yeah, within a school, you know, students have only one side job. One they are part they are uh, in the middle of their education, so they think they do not have enough skills. Uh, to to enter the art to, to enter the labor market, but when they are translated into the skills and only these two um, uh, inputs provides like twenty skills, you could see the 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 the, en the energy boost, the confidence boost that it that dedicates. It was really really nice to see. Um, and because it's validated, it also proves uh, proves something. And then for the for the organizations, it's um, really interesting to see that the organizations they want to think differently. They um, they need to think different differently, but they are also a little bit afraid to change. It's uh, it's 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 yeah it's it's a funny um, yeah it, yeah it's funny in which which day they they are in. So um, yeah, for them, the education and the working experience, they are important. If you're working in, in healthcare, uh, of course you need your certificates, your, um, your proof of that you, that you know what to do, but it's not, it's not the holy grail. And um, make use of the potential by thinking in uh, skills of jobs because a lot of potential is being, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of potential is not being used at this moment. Uh, if we are still still thinking in okay in jobs or um, functions as we are doing right now. So yeah, any uh, any questions? Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, presentation. Nice to see how you really experiment with with the skills and also then also go go beyond education because in the end of course you learn a lot in school but also a lot in life and uh, and uh, this is now uh, yeah being uh, being shown also within uh, within uh, the 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 skill cv uh i would also really show that that is also for the receiving parts so the the people that need to hire people uh it's also a kind of a change in culture and 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 behavior in to yeah to really work uh work differently in in uh, in that and i think with that also um especially because of most of lots of gig work isn't really related to specific education or or, or needed diplomas i think this could be also really work uh work within the gig economy and i also really like the way that you say okay we're really keen on what data you, you do share with the uh, with the um uh with the clients uh because yeah in many many times lots of lots of personal uh yeah uh, related data isn't really uh, apply on okay can you do this job uh, uh, yes or no let's see if there also a question um from the audience 
I see quite some discussions, but no uh, no specific question on uh, on this. Um, there may be a question to you, okay, because uh, uh, Skills V is not a uh, gig economy platform, uh, but what do you think that gig economy platforms can learn uh, from your experience of, of Skills V to avoid the bias and discrimination and also uh, unequal treatment of, of workers? uh within the gig economy also listening to the discussion uh, uh before yeah i um think it's um especially within the gig economy it's uh, easier i think uh, than the traditional labor market to look at skills and um really have the um the 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 yeah the um the people who are trying to uh, who are who, yeah who they are trying to match to um, have a look at them on a more objectified it's, it's a weird 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 word to use but on a more objectified uh, way to make this and make this match as you mentioned in your uh, in your example of um, you know, putting the questions at the side of the uh of the workers instead of the, uh, the side of the companies i think that's the um that's the first step the first step to take i think as as gig workers but also as uh general um job seekers we can we have more power than we than than we think and uh, i think using skills is a way to do uh, to do this Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for your contribution. And I uh, suggest we all uh, keep following uh, what you with skills we are 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 going to, uh, uh, yeah, are going to develop and also to yeah to really learn about okay and then how also can gig platforms also change their systems uh, to to avoid uh, inequality and discrimination. Uh, so thanks a lot. And uh, uh, Fiona, I think we go back to uh, to you.